I'm full of mosquito bites from last night's excursion to the forest. Also, it's kind of dark right now and I, I kind of like it, although it kind of ruins the shot. I'm gonna light this off. Like, I bought this from Scotland. Uh, I think it was at Morrison's, something like that. But look how cute it is. There we go. Now that's better. Where do I put this though? Okay, so I'll keep it there. So yeah, oh my god, it's getting even darker. Thing is, it's not even 10. I woke up really early today and that's good because I will managed to do everything that I want to do today and oh my god these mosquito bites are killing me I need to fix this lighting though first it's dark so yeah yesterday I decided to go to the nearby forest and take some self portraits uh, the reason I did this is because you guys always ask me how I take my self portraits and I decided to give you guys an insight of how this looks and also give you some tips on how to take really good self-portraits. Oh my god, my legs are very itchy, shit. First things first, uh, what you're gonna need are props. Props are your friends, are your family, are your everything, honestly. So what I do to spice my photos up are add some objects in them. For example, really good uh, props that you can add in your photos are candles. Also, mirrors. Mirrors create such beautiful surreal effects because it, if you're in a forest or in nature uh, the reflection of the mirror shows something else and it's such a beautiful effect to have in a self-portrait. Also what I like to bring are skulls. I have this animal skull I bought from a flea market in Berlin back in 2017. The skulls are pretty handy because if you're alone and you have a skull with you taking photos no one is gonna come next to you and that's that's good if you take photos by yourself because it's, it's harder for us girls. So another really good prop you can bring is just piece of fabric, piece of black or white fabric. I choose black. You can put it as a hoodie, you can put it as a cape, you can put it as a dress, you can put it as a background, you can put it as everything and it makes the photo look good because I really like uh, specific fabrics. For example, uh, this transparent fabric, I'm not sure how it's called. In Greek we call it tuli <laughs> and it looks so good in photos. Also velvet satin and this curtain flowy kind of fabric. These fabrics are, look so good in photos that if your posing is not the best and if you're really really shy, which I get it, I am as well, especially at first, like the first few minutes of a photo shoot, especially if someone else is taking my photo, I'm so stiff and I'm like, oh. but if you have such beautiful props, fabrics and things like that, you sort of let it flow because the props are doing half of your job and it helps you pose, it helps the photographers work, it makes it easier. I've already talked a lot about props, so let's go to step number two. Bring a tripod that's steady. We're talking about self-portraits. If someone else is taking your portraits, then that's easy because you're gonna be two people helping each other, but if it's just you, yeah, you're gonna need to invest in a very, very good tripod. Next step. Find a remote place and this is where things start to go wrong because I had so many remote places here in Greece and I left for Scotland like a year ago and now that I returned half of them are closed like literally you cannot enter because it's supposed to be private property by the owned by the county and I cannot go there anymore and all of the others uh, are discovered by people and so now people walk their animals there, do jogging and even take photos and videos there. So, yesterday some kids were at my usual photography spot at the nearby forest and I got so pissed and kind of fell off track because I wasn't able to find any uh, spot that I liked, everything looked bad and I was also wearing flip-flops, bad choice. <laughs> And yeah, I managed to find a spot, but you're gonna see. Uh, 
Ah, oh, shit. It's too fucking sunny. Okay, I guess we'll have to wait till sunset. I guess I'm the one being the weirdo here, carrying a skull with me. Hey. So here we have some trees that I think are gonna look good in the photos. Sadly, this place is not as uh, remote as I remembered it to be. There are a lot of people here and that's that's gonna make my work uh, more hard. So some people uh, got my photo spot and they're filming right now, which... <sighs> I have to find another spot. Fuck. I don't have any friends with me taking photos and... Um, that looks kind of normal, uh, but now I'm by myself with my camera, my tripod and my props and I look like a crazy person and honestly, I kind of like it! <sighs> so sweaty right now, but I think I found my spot, so I'm gonna put my tripod and start shooting. Everyone thinks I'm gonna burn this uh, forest down. <laughs> But I'm, I'm very careful. I know how to play with fire. Oh my god, it's so fucking dirty in here. How can people throw their trash like in nature? How? How? The next and final step, which I recently discovered and, and I'm so dumb that I did not discover it earlier, is, is the Canon app called Camera Connect, it's by Canon, and I initially, I initially downloaded this app because I wanted to send images straight to my phone from the camera. It connects with Wi-Fi, it's super easy, I'm not gonna show you how, but you go through your camera's uh, settings and you find uh, the Wi-Fi and press enable and then you find your camera in the Wi-Fi here you cannot connect to the internet it's just like the network that connects the two devices anyway I'm not gonna explain all this sciencey stuff you can find your camera you can find your images in camera if you connect it and then here it says remote live view shooting which I never used I have this camera for over a year now and I, like, last month I started using it. What I did before that was um, check the focus and put self-timer and ran and pose, which worked, okay? But this is so much easier because you have your phone in your hand and you just press the button here and it automatically focuses and you can pose press it and yeah you can either choose you can either choose a timer or not but either way when you're gonna press it you will be already in the spot having the pose that you want and also even though I have a viewfinder here I have this little screen where I can see myself when I'm taking a photo and I am away from the camera I cannot see my pose I can see like the outline uh, but here it has like a screen and you can see yourself here so you can see which uh, side you want to do and and you can also change the ISO the shutter speed and everything from here so you can just you you don't even have to know any of this stuff you just have to press ISO shutter speed up and down and see what works for you how if light or dark you want it and it's so so easy like I'm gonna show you now so I pose and I press the button here so it's I usually hold it down here so that it's not visible in the frame easy easy I kind of missed this place when I was in Scotland. It's kind of nice right now. Uh, I believe the golden hour is the best time to go out for photography. And yeah, whether you have a big forest or a pretty lousy one, like this one, it works. It makes your shots really, really nice. 
Okay, so as you can see, this is super easy. Of course, if you want to do something more complicated, you can ask a friend. But in my case, I don't have a lot of friends. And honestly, I prefer doing these photo shoots by myself because I'm very, very shy. And I found out that this works. So that's it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoy. Subscribe. Because I noticed most of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed and that really hurt, honestly. Subscribe, what you what you're waiting for? Like I'll see you in my next video, hopefully with something archy and creative. I really enjoy doing these videos. And yeah, stay safe and take care till then. Bye!